Hi guys, I thought I would do an ASMR of my movie review videos because from what I can see it looks like you guys, um, the, those of you who watch my ASMR videos also really like my movie review videos so I thought I would blend them together here and I have quite a list so if you listen to my ASMR videos to get to sleep and hopefully this one will help them out. So I'm just going to go through my list and talk about the movies that I watched and what I thought of them. So, let's get started. The first one is Malcolm and Marie. It is a movie with Zendaya um, on Netflix and it is all in black and white. Um, it is artsy um, and it's not normal. I would say it's not what you would expect from a movie. The entire movie takes place in their home. Um, it is definitely beautifully filmed and directed. Um, it's not necessarily my style normally. Um, it's almost what I would imagine would be something someone would make for a film school. Um, with that being said, Zendaya is very, very talented. And I believe it's Denzel Washington's son who plays her um, counterpart in the movie. Um, he's also very talented. Um, as much as I really actually did enjoy it, it was quite disturbing. It was essentially one night of a very unhealthy relationship with two dysfunctional people. Um, I think it's worth a watch if you are a fan of either one of them, but it's not something I would seek out to watch again. Next is I'm Your Woman with Rachel Brosnahan, who plays the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Um, this definitely looked like my sort of movie from the preview. It takes place in roughly the 70s, 60s. Um, it's about crime and fe feminism and personal growth. Um, it's slower than the preview makes it seem, but it kept my attention. And although it was two hours long, it was um, it didn't feel two hours long. Um, I would definitely watch that one again. It's essentially a woman who gets caught in a life of crime um, due to her husband um, and is kind of on the run for the rest of the movie. Um, a lot more things happen than that, but it's very, very interesting. Next is To All the Boys I've Loved, part three. Um, it was very normal. Um, I wrote down a girl is shamed for putting her future over a guy who could also follow her. Which is essentially what happens if you've seen the first two. Um, this one's very predictable. Um, the acting is good and it is cute, but um, the first one is definitely still the best by far. Um, this one essentially is, you know, both, you know, the main couple of the entire series. They're both going off to college. Are they going to go to college together or separate? Are they going to follow their dreams? Are they going to make the relationship a priority? It's that sort of thing. Next is I Care A Lot with Rosamund Pike, which I believe she actually won an award for this season. Um, and it's very clever. It's, um, I feel like she always plays a very unlikable character. Um, it's an infuriating plot and premises, like the whole vibe of the entire movie is pretty um, infuriating. It makes you very um, angry and annoyed. It had this vibe of being very sunny and bright, and the film was very, you know, bright colors and things like that, but it was a very dark um, premise. So I kind of liked that. Um, it was also really nice to see a gay couple be one of the main, you know, the main people in the movie, and it wasn't, you know, it was normalized. I really liked that. Next is a show which has only had I think five or seven episodes so far and it's Superman and Lois on the CW. I'm a big fan of the superhero shows, the DC shows on the CW. Supergirl is my favorite so when Superman and Lois was um, announced I was kind of hesitant because it seemed off for the normal CW stuff. It's not as bright and fun as most of it. Um, so. My boyfriend and I are watching it and it just seems a bit different so we're wondering how that is. Um, the show also has Superman and Lois having two grown high school aged sons when in Supergirl the 
same actors who played the same characters had one son. Um, so we're kind of curious if this is, you know, a jump in time, a different reality. Um, uh, Supergirl has started again as well, and they haven't mentioned anything about, like, there being a crossover, so I'm very curious to um, keep watching. Um, I do have to say, it definitely doesn't seem like a spin-off to Supergirl. Like I said, those ones have, like, comedy elements and musical elements, and this one is definitely more of a dark um, vibe. Um, but it is good, and I do enjoy it watching it. Um, it has a really good balance of, you know, Clark and Lois being a family, and also being Superman. So I really like that. Um, I'm definitely going to keep watching that. I also finished Episodes, which is on Showtime. Um, it is Matt LeBlanc's kind of, not follow-up to Friends, but, um, you know, his big show after Friends, and it's really good. Um, it's not at all what you expect. He's actually barely in the first episode, which was very misleading, but, um, he essentially plays a heightened version of himself in it. Um, I say definitely give it a chance. It gets even better after season one. It made me laugh out loud, um, and it ended how I imagined it would end. The, like, the, the ending is really good. The end of, like, the final season, it didn't feel rushed, it didn't feel bad, it didn't feel, like, where they missed the mark. It was really, like, satisfying, and it was very fast to watch, too. So if you're looking for, like, a funny show to watch, you know, when you're sick, you have a week, you could probably get through all of it. Next, the X-Men movie. Um, my boyfriend introduced me to these after we watched all the Marvel movies and the Star Wars movies and Lord of the Rings. Um, so, um, X-Men, I actually really enjoy. I find it to be a lot less violent than, uh, Marvel. The budget is clearly lower, um, but it's more calm and not as intense, so if you like kind of the behind-the-scenes of Superman movies, or not Superman, like superhero movies, um, you might like the X-Men movies a bit more. I feel like there's a bit more thought and teamwork and, you know, discussion than there is actual violence. And even the violence in this isn't as, like, brutal. Um, so I really enjoyed the X-Men movies. Not all of them, but most of them. Next, Moxie, which is on Netflix. And, um, it's slow moving at first. It's essentially about a teenager who starts realizing what feminism is and realizing how important it is, and she used to be someone that kind of just agreed with how things went, and just like went with how things are, and um, she's starting to realize that that's not really the way to be, um, and it made me cry, and the teenagers in it actually do look like teenagers, which is refreshing, um, but I really actually wish the stuff that happened in this movie happened in real life. It's very inspiring, and I think it's something a lot of teenage girls and guys should watch. On division, I literally wrote no words. All of the actors did just oh my god, and I'm gonna keep it right there. If you've seen One Division, you know. If you haven't, watch it. Um, next, I tried to watch Emma on HBO Max, um, which is a Jane Austen novel made into a I guess it's a show movie. Um, of course, there was the one of Gwyneth Paltrow, um, and then also Clueless is a you know retelling of Emma. This one I couldn't watch. It had um, Anya Taylor-Joy, who's very popular right now, and she's talented, but I feel like if you saw the version with Gwyneth Paltrow, you didn't really need to watch this one. Um, it just, I don't know, it, it just, I didn't even finish it, so I obviously didn't like it that much. Um, next was Murdering Mormons on Netflix, which is a documentary about what happened. I want to say it was the 90s maybe the 80s, maybe even earlier. Um, it was very, very interesting. If you like documentaries, you'll love this. It's like intense scandal lies. Um, it's a very good documentary. Next, um, I watched, wow, I wrote a lot for this one. I'm pretty sure that it is on HBO Max. It's the Commonwealth versus Michelle Carter. It was the teenage girl who kind of pushed her boyfriend into suicide. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of it. Um, and it's infuriating to watch. Um, it's very clear from this documentary that they both had a lot of um, mental health issues, um, but she did fail him, in my opinion, and um, she's delusional. I wrote a lot of stuff, so I'm just reading it. Um, I 
feel like when I was watching it, I was just venting. Um, but I agree that she should be treated heavily. Um, but she also needs to take responsibility because she did cause his death. It looks like they brought, brought out the worst in each other. Um, she knew that she had a level of power over him and knew he was struggling with depression and he depended on her and only her. Um, it may not be 100% illegal what she did, but it is immoral and she needs some sort of punishment. Just like I said, just like bullies in other suicide cases. And it wasn't just her actions that night, but their whole relationship, looking at their text messages, um, you could see what she did. I'm not saying she should be rotting in prison, but she should have severe, severe um, psychiatric help. If you're interested in documentaries, um, it's definitely a solidly made one. Um, next, You Are My Home with Alyssa Milano as a minor character on Netflix. Um, it's um, very sad and it's based on reality. The acting, of course, isn't great. It's very Hallmark and Lifetime, but um, it's about um, ICE and a family having, you know, being deported and a child kind of having to survive in America. Um, it's very, it's very hard to watch, but it's, you know, underneath the rose-colored glasses of, you know, Lifetime kind of movies. Next, Cecil, the Cecil Hotel documentary. It started off slow, but it was super interesting. I actually didn't know about that, so it was like very eye-opening for me. It's another really good documentary, and I believe that one's on Netflix too. Then HBO Max is Alan vs. Pharaoh, which was um, infuriating again to watch. A fantastic documentary. It's really informative, and I feel like you should just watch it if you are interested in that whole situation with Woody Allen and his stepdaughter. Um, or I guess daughter, actually, um, you should definitely watch this. Um, I feel like even though this is such a prevalent, like, thing that's so known, a lot of people still don't know about it. Um, and I just don't really understand how he got away with all of that and still isn't in jail. Um, he's very, clearly very controlling and manipulative. He's a powerful guy and, um, it just... It's really disgusting how he not only took advantage of his daughter, but his wife too, to get to his to her children. Um, and what's so messed up is that his money and power helps him get away with it. Um, and what's so even more disgusting is there's other people who have been, you know, sexually assaulting adult women for years and have gotten in trouble. And he assaulted a child and, well, I'm, I would say multiple children in my opinion but um, he's just getting away with it and it just makes me really mad and he clearly groomed the woman he's married to now um, and it's just, it's really, it's really sick um, and just, it's so clear that this girl was not lying and all the money that Woody Allen had to make this go away it was just sick and it's disturbing and frustrating and the fact that this man is not behind bars right now is so infuriating when there is innocent people behind bars for simple marijuana charges. Um, it's just, you know, it, it pisses me off and I know this isn't the most relaxing discussion for an ASMR video, but um, it's just, um, it's really infuriating and I, you know, I watched another um, thing recently, it was something my dad was watching. Um, like an intervention show, and this girl was saying how she, if she got caught with the smallest amount of heroin possible, she'd get 10 years in prison, and her stepfather, who molested her from when she was 5 years old until she was 12, got one year. And it's just sick. It's horrible. I mean, we already know the justice system is not broken, but, you know, made to be this unfair in so many ways, and, um, just, you know, it comes to light, it's more and more, like, terrible every day. Next, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I love it. Um, it feels like a really long MCU movie, um, which I do enjoy. I really love, um, both main characters. I love Sebastian Stan. I have a huge crush on him, um, and that only really started since this show, I feel like, but, um, I'm really loving all the Marvel stuff, um, 
uh, Disney Plus as well as the Star Wars stuff, so I'm really happy with all of it. I'm really excited for Loki as well. Next, Varsity Blues, which is the documentary about all the parents paying, you know, and buying to get their kids into college. Um, it, it, it just shows like how it all happened, the main guy behind it, how he did it, and all that stuff. I found it very interesting um, because we didn't get that unless you read all the articles, I guess, that came out. But I found it very interesting to see it in documentary form. But what I said is that instead of jail time for any of these people who will just be back out in a couple of weeks, they should have to pay tuition for multiple children who didn't get in because their kid got into that school. There you go. That would have been such a better, you know, use of their money than paying already wealthy lawyers and going to prison for two weeks. I mean, obviously money is what's important to these people, so they should have to pay and help someone else with their money, not just give it to a lawyer. Seems right to me. But uh, what's so frustrating to me, even more so than the crimes that happened, is that college is more important to these parents than the fact that their kids could be successful without college. For instance, Lori Lawlin, Laughlin, is that how you say it? Yeah. Um, her daughter um, was on YouTube. I even used to watch her and she was very successful, but the, her doing this ruined not only her college chances, but now her chances of any of the things that she used to do. Um, so, you know, if a parent could just accept the fact that college isn't everything, then um, none of this really would have happened. So the whole thing is just, you know, it's just really insane. I also think that these parents could have invested in businesses for their kids instead of college and most of them weren't even that interested in going. It's just really infuriating, but it's definitely worth watching. Um, and I think that one's on Netflix as well. Next, I watched Law & Order The Menendez Brothers or The Menendez Murders. Um, I had known about the story, but not in great detail because it did happen when I was, like, in diapers. Um, so I found it to be very interesting. It had a lot of really well-known actors, um, and it was just such an amazing story. It had really great acting, um, and I think I'm still not sure exactly what happened, but it seems like it's very obvious that they were being abused, in my opinion. But I would definitely watch it. I think it's a really great kind of, it's similar to the, um, American Crime Stories, the one with OJ and um, Versace, um, this one is similar to that. Who Killed Garrett Phillips? I watched a lot of documentaries during this time. Um, sorry about that. I received a phone call. So let's get back to it. Um, who Killed Garrett Phillips? Um, a bunch of white cops playing a black guy um, with no evidence. Um, they pretty much focused on this one man with um, and nothing else. Um, they listen to hearsay rather than the facts, and it literally just sounds like the most racist town in America. Um, I'm pretty sure this was in New York. Um, it looks like he's the only black guy in the area too, so if he had killed a young boy in broad daylight, he someone would have seen him taking off. Um, I don't really even understand why he was a suspect. There was no motive. There was more motive for the other guy who clearly did it, um, who was also the mother's ex-boyfriend, but he was a sheriff. Um, and he was obviously friends with all the cops working in the case, and he also had history of violence, and um, she, he was, this white guy obviously did it. He was allowed to sit in the interview with the mother the night that it happened. It is so clear that the guy that they blamed it on didn't do it, and it's just really infuriating, and what's really crazy, I mean, I wrote so much for this, if I read it all, you'd be here forever, um, but what's really crazy is when this man, um, moved out of that town, the black man, and moved away with his family, um, to kind of get out of that town, because everyone there thought he did it, even though it was clear that he didn't, he moved in to a house, walkable distance from my house. Um, literally, they showed his house, and it's next to my church. Like, one house away from my church. Like, I've been on that street a thousand times. I could have driven by it while they were filming this. It's just so crazy. 
Um, but just, it's a very good documentary if you want to watch it. Um, next I watched a comedy with my boyfriend called Buddy Games, which is essentially like game night, that kind of thing. Um, with Josh Duhamel, Dax Shepard, James Roday, um, and it's pretty much just guys praying, playing pranks and making fun of each other. It was kind of dumb. The ending was just kind of disappointing, but it was funny. Like, it's not something I would seek out to watch again, but it wasn't bad. Supernova, which I was very excited to watch with Colin Firth and Stanley Tucci. Um, it was not as good as I wanted it to be. Um, I feel like all the best bits were in the ad or the preview. Um, it's essentially a gay couple dealing with dementia, one of them having dementia. Um, and that's something I really liked about it too. Like I said earlier, was that, um, you know, this is a gay couple, but none of the movie had anything to do with them being gay. It was just a gay couple dealing with regular relationship things, which is how we need to see gay people in, you know, TV and movies and books. It normalizes them. And I just thought it was a beautiful movie. It really was. Um, it just, it seemed very slow. It just wasn't as exciting and amazing as I wanted it to be. Um, they also both just seemed a bit young for dementia to be hitting, in my opinion. Um, but I would say don't watch it if you're tired. But if you're not tired, um, it's worth the watch. It's really sad and touching. Um, one thing I did want to mention was, you know, two straight men playing two gay characters. It's a little, um, disappointing. I mean, this movie was filmed, I think, in 2020. You know, by now, can we do better? Um, but it was about their love and their life, and, um, it was really amazing and beautiful. It was just not the best movie ever. And then finally, the last movie I recently watched was Thunder Force um, with Octavia Spencer and Melissa McCarthy. It was much better than I anticipated. Um, it's kind of what we wanted the Ghostbusters women remake to be, um, but it, that one kind of failed. This was definitely better. Um, it's not something I would necessarily watch again. It was pretty predictable, but it was decent and it was funny and there's a lot of good actors in it. Um, so that is it for my movie reviews video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you want these to continue to be in ASMR format, please do let me know. Um, and I will see you guys very soon. Bye.